I had a birthday on Friday. Yeah. Sure did. Friday the 13th was my birthday. And uh, I tweaked my back, you know, and I said, Mom and Dad are like, what did you do? Man, I had a birthday. I turned older. That's what I did, right? Uh, that's what I did. But uh, <laughs> Braylee, I love Braylee. She gave me this, this gift bag. and it, I was like, I love coffee mugs. I'm like, yes. And I opened it up. It says, pray about it, girl. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I'm like, hey, you meant that to be funny. I'm going to use that. I'm going to have it right here on my table all, all Sunday long, man. So what's really funny, you guys, this is so, it's just like God. This is so funny. Uh, this week I was writing this sermon, and I had an inv- a, a vision this week of me, um, instead of preaching like, like I normally preach, I'm usually real fired up and, and just all over the stage. The camera guys are always telling me, like, man, we can't follow you, Pastor. And I'm like, well, you need to follow me because I ain't slowing down, right? So, uh, and I had a, a vision this week of, you know, I think this week I need to settle down. I need to sit down, like, with a cup of coffee, like, I'm just, like, we're, we're talking. We just need to have a conversation this week. And that's what I kind of thought of as I was writing this this week. And, and wouldn't you know it, on Friday, I tweaked my back. <laughs> the Lord's like, all right, I got you, bro. <laughs> I'm going to make you sit down. So, all right, all right. Thank you, Lord. I see how you work. All right. So, uh, if you got your Bibles, we're going to be in Galatians. All right? So, you can go ahead and turn to, turn to Galatians 5. Okay, we're going uh, to be talking about the fruits of the Spirit today. I should say we're going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit today and the different characteristics that make up each one of those fruits. Uh, so Galatians 5 is where we're going to be. But before we get into that scripture, um, I got to bring you up to speed with where we are in case you aren't, aren't sure where we are. If you hadn't been in a while or if you uh, just aren't, aren't thinking about it. Um, we're not necessarily in a series. We do a lot of we do a lot of series. If that's the right, I don't think that's the right grammar, but um, we do a lot of series here. Uh, and last week I, I said, "Hey, it's time for us to go deeper. We need to go deeper." Revive Church. Um, I came back from the Unite Conference with Tim Tebow and Pastor Earl, and I told you guys that story about. Uh, I came home and I told Amanda, I said, "I need to spend time with God. Not I need to spend more time with God, but I need to spend time with God." And she knew what I meant, but I shared that with a few other people, and they kind of looked at me funny. They don't know what I mean because they know that I spend time with God every day. But the time that I'm spending with God every day, it's not what I need. Um, you know, if you're going through a devotional or reading through the Bible in a year and you're sort of checking it off the list, it, become, it can become religious. Your pursuit of God can become religious. Uh, when you prepare your tithe, for those of you all that are, that are uh, you know, avid tithers, um, when you prepare that, um, you can do that without giving your heart if you just do it systematically. And, and um, so you can also pursue God systematically and not really see much of a change, even though I, I read my Bible, I, I, you know, I walked and I talked, and, you know, except maybe all I'm talking to God about is what I need. I'm going to him immediately with, with uh, like he's a genie in a bottle and, you know, and, and, um, and, and just, you know, saying, saying what I need to the Lord instead of spending that quality time with him. Yeah, pray about it, girl. So, uh, so, uh, so last week I was like, okay, so I'm going to teach you guys, like, okay, how? Like, we, we, I tell you all the time, uh, the other pastors here, we tell you all the time, you got to build a relationship with Jesus. Man, you got to have a personal relationship with Jesus. You got to spend time with God. But a lot of times I don't think we're real clear on, okay, but how? What does that look like? We've been doing that so long that we assume people know how to do that. And, and then I started thinking recently, I'm like, I don't know that people know how to do that. I'm not sure that I, I'm seeing the fruit in people's lives that they are doing that. And I'm like, so, okay, cool. I, I first had to learn how to do that. And so I want I to show you all over the next few weeks how to do that. And so I started calling this series How to Talk to God. And I'm like, well, I don't know that that's entirely accurate because I was talking to God. You know, how to spend time with God. Well, okay, I was spending time with God. I'm not sure if that's totally accurate either. So I kept trying to search for the series title, if it, if it is going to actually be a series. And so I, I, I came up, you know what we need every day? Like we come to church on Sunday, but every single day we need to have daily personal encounters with the Spirit of God. 
And I know that's a mouthful, but uh, if, if God changes kind of that direction this week, then so be it. But right now, I, I think that's the best depiction of what it is that I'm trying to to articulate is that we need to have daily personal encounters with the Spirit of God. When you encounter somebody, you interact with them to a point, to a degree that it changes you. You know, if you encounter something, you know, I've always been fascinated by aliens my whole life, and they've got, you know, first encounters and third, you know, whatever that, uh, that movie was, uh, 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 Encounters of the Third Kind or whatever it's called. Close Encounters, there you go. Close Encounters with the third of the Third Kind. and, and um, they're encountering something that's changing their life, aren't they? All right, so that's what encounter means. So last week we talked about, uh, last week we talked about the, uh, how to pray through the, uh, the Lord's Prayer. How to pray through the Lord's Prayer. And God, Jesus already taught us how to talk to him and how to hear him and, and how, to, how to have him talk back. And so if you didn't, didn't see it, uh, it's on YouTube and, and stuff. So go, go back and check out our, our uh, message from last week on how to talk to God but, um, and, and by praying through the Lord's Prayer. But this week we're going to uh, talk about how to pray through the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, and so, I, you know, instead of just calling it the fruit of the Spirit, which is what I settled on, I had other titles too. And uh, I was like, I don't want you, you know, how to avoid having droopy fruit or withered fruit or something like that. I was going through all my titles and I told a man, I was like, how about, um, is your fruit frumpy? Like, how about that title? <laughs> don't let your fruit get frumpy. And, uh, and she was like, frumpy? I don't think about fruit being frumpy. Like, outfits are frumpy. Um, fruits are wilty. And I'm like, yeah, but it just doesn't sound good to say, don't let your fruit get wilty. You know, you, you need it. I said, and I told her, I was like, you need an F word. And I'm like, um, not that kind. Y'all's minds are so dirty. All right. Is your fruit frumpy? So anyway, those are just the funny ways that I came up with uh, this message. But, um, but I want to talk to you guys today about how to, how to pray through the fruit of the Spirit. But then as I began to do it, I'm like, man, there's something much more important in how to pray through the fruit that I don't want us to miss. So I started thinking about, okay, what are the fruit? fruits of the, of the spirit. What, what are they? Where does that fruit come from? Like if we just pray on, excuse me, on the, if we just pray on the fruit, okay, um, I just want you guys to concentrate on love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. I just want you to pray on these things. Okay, but the fruit is the evidence of something else. It's, it's, it's the fruit of what? It's the fruit of the Spirit. So where does this fruit come from? What Spirit? What, what are we talking about here? And we're going to get into that. And if you instantly think, oh, it's the Holy Spirit, listen close to this, this message today because it's, it's not quite just that simple as, as the Holy Spirit. Really interesting how God was talking to me this week about the fruit of the Spirit. So here's the scripture. Galatians 5, 16 through 18 says... I say then, walk in the Spirit. So first of all, it's commanded for us to do this. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. Because we struggle with that all the time. All humans do. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. So these things are in, in, uh, in conflict with one another. Oh, here you go. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. We're not supposed to do the things we wish. No, because <laughs> most of the things that we wish to do are not very good things. Am I right? <laughs> Who's honest enough to say, yeah, most of the stuff that pops into my head, I shouldn't be doing. Right? All right. So, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law, which, which means, clarify real quick, it's a whole other message. You know, we get into stuff like this on Wednesday night Bible study, so I'm not going to get into it. But it basically means if you're led by the Spirit, you're not a slave to the law. You, you don't have to worry, like, oh, what if, did I break one of the commandments? You know, like... If you're led by the Spirit, you don't have to worry about that stuff. Okay, so Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 33, you don't have to turn there. It's just one little, one little thing. It says, but seek first. Everybody say first. first. First, man. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these things will be added to you. So if you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, everything else will be added to you. Everything else. It's like, this is the formula. This is it, man. I've been talking a lot about Israel because of what's going on over there. And when we went there, we saw the Orthodox Jewish people absolutely living in slavery. Now, we stand with Israel. Please don't hear what I'm, you know, uh, don't, don't get me wrong. 
Um, but the Orthodox Jews have so many religious, um, ritualistic ways about them, and they're constantly worried about breaking these commandments. They're not set free in Christ. Um, they're constantly worried, what if I mess up? To the point that when we had dinner, we had Shabbat dinner with a Jewish family, they have to, to set their light switches wherever they're going to be for the whole weekend because they, they can't turn a light switch on or it would be an abomination to God and it's, offense, it, and, and it's punishable by death um, if they break that commandment. And so they make sure they leave the lights where they're going to have them. And it's just crazy. They prepare their food in advance because they, they can't prepare food during, during Shabbat, during their, their Sabbath um, at all. It's, it's, it's religion. It's religion to its core. So I love that y'all sang that, uh, break off my religion because um, your way is better. That's what that song meant if y'all didn't know what that meant. Um, some folks come to a church thinking this is religion, and then we sing a song that says, break off my religion. I don't like that, you know, and you're confused. Um, you didn't come today um, to, uh, to learn about religion, all right? We came today to learn about relationship. So Galatians 5, 19 says, okay, this is the main where the fruit of the Spirit is listed, but first it lists the acts of the flesh. Galatians 5, 19 says, the acts of the flesh, you guys, these are obvious, all right? And notice it doesn't call it the fruit of the flesh. God doesn't call bad stuff good stuff. It's not the fruit of the flesh. It's bad. It's the acts of the flesh. It's how we act. We're a bunch of knuckleheads, and it's how we act. The acts of the flesh are obvious, you guys, and I think the first half are obvious. The second half is where we start going, oh, snap, okay? Because, all right, here they go. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures. Some of y'all's Bibles might say debauchery. It means, uh, you know, giving in to your desires in a lustful way. All right, idolatry, sorcery, or witchcraft. All right, okay, so we're good up to this point. Like, really, if I'm reading through this list, I'm not even reading it that close. Sexual immorality, I'm good. All right, I dealt with that years ago. Impurity, I'm as pure as the driven snow. All right, uh, <laughs> Lustful pleasures, I got that under control. We're good. Idolatry, I, you know, I don't, I don't worship any other god or nothing like that. Um, I'm not into sorcery, um, you know, or witchcraft, so I'm good there. But, which, by the way, the original word for that, just FYI, is pharmakia. Doesn't that sound like a, a pretty close relation to one of our English words? It's pharmaceuticals. So wizardry, sorcery, witchcraft. Um, they used uh, mind-altering drugs back then to tap into that spirit and mind-altering drugs to this day are still an abomination to God, FYI. All right? Um, so um, now please don't hear that I'm telling you if you're taking medication that you are prescribed, don't go flush that in the toilet and tell your doctor, uh, you know, no, please understand what I'm, what I'm saying, okay? So don't, don't uh, you know, don't get rid of your medication that the doctor gave you. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so we're all good on this part. And then comes... Quarreling. What? How many of you guys quarreled with somebody this week? And all God's children said, yeah, sure did. Sure did. How many of y'all got your arm around the person you quarreled with yesterday? <laughs> On the way to church this morning. Right? All right. Quarreling is in there with sexual immorality? With sorcery? What? Arguing with somebody's in there with witchcraft? Hmm, look out now. All right, jealousy. Oh no, it's starting to hit close to home. Outburst of anger? That one makes me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Selfish ambition, dissension. Dissension is like what we see in political parties all the time. It don't matter what you say, somebody's going to say something else. You say it's red, they say it's white. You say it's yellow, they say it's green, whatever. All right. Um, division, envy. These are things you can't even see. You can't see envy. You don't really see division, right? Drunkenness, you see that. All right. Uh, wild parties. And so you're like, okay, I'm good. I'm, it's listing all these things. And then it just says, hey, and all this other stuff like this. So... All of us fall somewhere in there. You know, there's not one of us in here is like, nope, I'm good. I've never done any of that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, you have. All right. Okay. So here we go. I warn you now, as I did before, that those who live like this, here's the craziness of it. If you live like that, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So we've all done all of this stuff. 
Well, maybe we haven't done all of it, okay? But we've all done it. Probably most of us have two or three of these things we can check off. Three or four, four or five, I don't know, all right? So, and if you live like this, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, my gosh. Like, that's bad news. But there's a way out. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is, let's say them together, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Whenever I recite it, I get goodness and gentleness mixed up because they both start with G. All right. And I'm just going to encourage you right now, you should have those memorized. The kids have them memorized, don't they? If you went to revive kids for any length of time whatsoever, you know how to pray through the fruit of the Spirit. All right? Amen. So, um, against these, there is no law. Okay? There's no, which, nothing's going to come against these is basically what that's saying. Nothing's going to come against these things. These are it, man. This is it. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. What this is saying is if you've been crucified with Christ, which if you're a Christian, you have, then we've crucified the flesh. So we're going to destroy the acts of the flesh with the fruit of the Spirit. All right? Those, in, other, in other words, those who belong to Jesus Christ have nailed their passions and desires of their sinful nature. You've nailed it to the cross and crucified them there with the Lord. Since we are living by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit's lead in every part of our lives. All right? This is telling us that since we are living by the Spirit, we have to be led by the Spirit. If we're living by the Spirit, you've got to be led by the Spirit. Keeping in step with the Spirit. Following the Spirit in every part of our lives, which means we can't just check in on God on Sunday mornings. That's what my biggest cry for our church is to let's go deeper with God. Let, we can't just keep having these little superficial relationships, man. It's like if you met a, fellas, if you met a girl that you liked and you went to the movies and then you said this was fun and told her goodnight and she, she went her way and you went your way. And next week you met her at the movies again and you saw another movie. You didn't talk during the movie. You watched the movie. And then afterwards she goes her way and you go your way. And then you do it again the next week and you do it again the next week and you do it again the next week. You've been seeing this girl now for six months. And your relationship has stayed right here superficial. You hadn't even had a conversation with her. Right? So that's a lot of times that's how we are with our relationship with the Lord. We come in on Sundays and we have a great time. It's fun. But you guys, if we're not having a daily personal encounter with the Spirit of God, we're missing it. Man, I'm telling you, you're missing your strength. You're missing your joy. You're missing your power. You're missing your grace. You're missing, you're missing your mercy. Man, you're, you're missing so much more of what God has to offer. God did not die so we could spend two hours with him every week. Now, these are good two hours, all right? But he died for much more than that. Let's go deeper with him. Let's go deeper with him, man, right? Praise God. Communing with the Spirit must be done on a daily and even multiple times daily basis, all right? Because all of us have these flesh, these acts of the flesh. So we all got to go deeper with God on a daily basis. Do you only have the acts of the flesh on Sunday? No. No. <laughs> so we can't just rely on... All right, y'all get it. All right, so here we go. Next scripture, 2 Corinthians 7 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting or maturing is another word holiness in the fear of God. So some of us need to mature, right? I wouldn't say that. I'd actually say all of us need to mature. If I say some of us or some of you need to mature, that, that uh, eliminates me. And if y'all know me well at all, y'all know you need to mature a little bit too, Shannon. All right, so I do. You're right. All right, so um, we all need to mature. This is part of it. But you know what? If, I, if you're dirty and I, you need to take a bath, you, you're going to take one bath and be done? I know some people that think that. <laughs> right? I've prayed with some people before, and I'm like, I think they thought if they brushed their teeth once, they were finished for life. <laughs> That's a daily thing, man. You can't, like, it's going to get dirty again. you got to take a bath all the time. Same thing for cleansing your spirit, you guys. you gotta, you got to bathe yourself in a Christian atmosphere on a daily basis. You got to bathe again and again, bathing yourself in the word, bathing yourself, listening to music that encourages your faith because you've got dirtiness in you 
You've got to clean it all the time. Cleansing yourself daily. Acts of the flesh are envy, jealousy, rage, division. You can't even see that stuff. There's a special kind of soap that cleans that stuff. This is in the nooks and crannies, man. You can't just do a good old, you know, body scrub. Like, there's a special kind of soap for that. They don't make actual soap. They make the Word of God. This is our soap. That's a big bar of soap. This is the kind of soap, though, that, you know, washes you, like liquid form. Goes, just washes your whole, all the dirt, all the dirt off, okay? By the washing of the water of the Word. And you got to monitor this stuff, you guys, because that's a big job. It's a big job to monitor our acts of the flesh, okay? So look, I get serious about pursuing this good fruit because I know how prone I am to the fleshly acts and the filthiness of the spirit as well. We are all prone to those filthy acts. So if you're really serious about walking the Christian walk, you got to get serious about the fruit as well. Amen? All right, let's keep going. So what I'm wanting you to get serious about is having a daily encounter with the Spirit of God. If you don't write nothing else down today, all right, for my sister who uh, is, is a grammar um, leader. I shouldn't say that, should I? All right. If you don't write nothing else down today, all right, if you don't write anything else down today, please write in your notebooks. Having a daily encounter with the Spirit of God is, is our new goal. All right, because we, we don't, man, I'm, I got... This is a little side note. This is for somebody in here today. I was praying for you this week. I don't know your name, but I was praying for you this week. All right? Because we don't just have to fight filthiness in the flesh. It's also in the spirit. And, man, that's where it gets really, really strong. They're called strongholds. In Corinthians, the word tells us we have to fight filthiness in this spirit. Pride, envy, jealousy, rebellion, hatred, discourse. You know, some people... You know, the discourse. You know people in your life who, they're just argumentative. You can't, I mean, you can't talk to them. They have such a different way of thinking. You can't say anything to them ever, ever, ever. Whatever you say, they're going to say it right back. You say white, they're going to say black, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't even matter. That's the spirit of discord. They're never going to be happy. So I'm going to set somebody free today. So a lot of times we spend a lot of time and our energy on these people. You're never going to make a difference in them anyway, but they, they consume your thoughts. They consume your anger. They consume your bitterness and rage because they did something to you a long time ago that you just can't let go of. And, and even if you try to make a point to them or even people that you, that you love that you just want to get the message of the cross and you try and you try and you try and they just don't get it. All it leaves you with is being confused, discouraged, disappointed, angry. Okay, Everybody has people in, in our lives that we just can't get along with. And we're having such a hard time for forgiving these people. They're never going to be happy. They're never going to be satisfied. And I want somebody to be delivered right now. There's going to be people in your life, they don't care what you do. All right? You, you can change your hair. You can change your dress. You stand on your head and bark. They ain't going to change. Right? They're just not, they're just not going to. Y'all know people that I'm, I'm talking about. Man, you can bring them cookies every day, do nice stuff to them. They're still going to have an issue with you. Stop trying to please these people. All right? Now, like I said, this is for somebody in here today. Maybe it's for all of us in here today. Man, stop trying to please these people. Some folks refuse to be pleased or appeased. You cannot define success in your life by changing their minds and behaviors. You think your value and your success is determined if you, if you can change the way that they act and they behave. You'll always fail. And if you fail at thinking you're a success, that's a big, big failure. You can't define your own success by the degree that you're able to change somebody else's mind or behavior. Because you still got to get up. You still got to get dressed. You still got to go to work. You can't make change in them or changing their mind an idol in your life. And some of us have made somebody else an idol in our life. You've made trying to change somebody else's behavior an idol in our life. Some of us have created an idol out of something that you can't even see. And the idol that you've created is public opinion about you. The idol is something somebody said about you that you believed. And you spend all your life worshiping at the shrine of getting them to see that you're not like that. Don't think that of me. Or I've got to straighten them out somehow. I'm letting you know if that's you, I release you of that today in the name of the Lord. Amen.
You are released of that. You ain't got to carry that anymore. You have permission from God to let that go. You've been released of a lot of things before. Some of y'all been released of, of smoking addiction or other addiction. You've been released of alcohol addictions. Okay, we get our minds behind that. Why can't you be released from a spiritual bondage that's built, built on a lie and a self-esteem issue? Well, today you've been delivered and released from that too. Praise God. All right. Hey, man, people <laughs> and, and, and these, these types of folks, man, I just, I, you got to be delivered from people and your need to have their validation in order to love yourself. So that's a little side note, but God laid that on my heart really thick this week. So I'll say that again. You have to be, deli be delivered today from people, from people in general. Be delivered from people and your need to have their validation in order to love yourself. God loves you and you don't need anybody else to tell you that. Amen. All right. You don't need that junk in your life. All right. Can I go deeper? I'll go deeper. All right. Here we go. So. I got to giggle every time I take a drink out of that cup. All right. So. How do you water your fruit tree every day? All right. So fruit of the spirit. Let's get back to it. How do you water your fruit tree every day? Because I'm not just going to talk to you about the fruit, but about that word spirit of the spirit. Here's a cool, a cool uh, revelation that I had this week. Whenever you see fruit, you have a relationship. Anytime you see fruit, you have a relationship. I mean, like real fruit, like a banana, okay, an apple. You can't have a banana without a relationship. God made fruit that way, and the fruit of the Spirit is no different. If you plant a, a, a banana tree in the middle of the desert, it might grow. You might water it or whatever, but it's never going to produce a banana because in order for fruit to be bore, I guess is the right tense, on that tree, in order for that tree to bear fruit, it must have a relationship with other plants and bees. It's got to be cross-pollinated. What's crazy is for this fruit to grow on this tree, it's got to be cross-pollinated with an already existing fruit-bearing plant, which blows my mind on so many levels. One is that means it had to have been created. It couldn't have evolved or you'd never have any fruit at all because in order for fruit to grow, it's got a bud, blossom, and then fruit. It has a bud, then it blossoms, blossom falls off, then it produces fruit. In order for that process to happen, it's got to be cross-pollinated by a bee or bird or something else bringing nectar from another fruit-bearing plant that has already bared this fruit, bore this fruit, and, um, and that's what makes it have fruit. All right, So you have to have a relationship. Apple trees can't have an apple without the relationship that they have with bees and, and wind and birds and other, and other uh, environmental factors, nectar and all kinds of stuff. You cannot be fruitful alone. There's the message. You, you can't be fruitful alone. You can't be fruitful and multiply alone. All right? You, you can't bear fruit. The fruit of the spirit that we just went over, I won't go over them all, but love, peace, patience, all the fruit... You can't do that by yourself. So up in Montana, Dad and I took a hunting trip uh, years ago. Uh, we went elk hunting, and they were, they were uh, telling us how to deal with grizzly bears because we don't have bears in Texas. And they were telling us how to deal with grizzly bears. And what people's big mistake is is you see a baby bear, and it's so cute and cuddly, right? You want to go up to it. Now, I mean, I, when they're telling us this, me and dad are both like, what moron is going to go up to? Uh, but that's how, they ha that's how accidents happen. These people see the baby bear. And then they told us, but when you see a baby bear, what's nearby? Mama. Mama bear is nearby. All right? There's a mama and a daddy somewhere nearby in there. You see a baby snake, there's a mama and a daddy somewhere. Right? Okay, so if you see fruit, something produced that fruit. There's a mama and a daddy of that fruit somewhere, and that's the spirit. All right, so we're going to get into that. There's a parent relationship that has caused that fruit. Who are the parents of the fruit of the spirit? You don't get the fruit to manifest in your life just by reading the scripture and knowing the fruit. The fruit is a result of the spirit. Okay, so who are the parents of this fruit? If you're taking notes, this is a big point. The fruit of the Spirit is brought about by the union of the Spirit of God and the Spirit of man. 
The fruit is the baby of the parents are the spirit of God union with the spirit of man. The, the word union comes from the word communion, communing with. Communing with something is when you, on a regular basis, you get together and you have union with this person on a regular basis. Sounds a whole lot like have a daily personal encounter with the Spirit of God. So that's what will bring about the fruit of the Spirit is when the Spirit of God collides with the Spirit of man. Because I can tell you all about the fruit, but that will only give you the knowledge of it. I want you to get to know the Spirit of it that will produce this fruit in your life. Okay? Next major point is the fruit is how you measure the health of your spirit. You can't just pray through the fruit of the Spirit without knowing where it comes from. It won't do you that much good. It'll do you a little bit of good. Um, you know, it'll tell you I'm supposed to love and not hate. Okay, but you're still willing yourself to love and not hate instead of being cleansed from the inside out. And the desire to hate just washes from you. The fruit is how you measure the health of your spirit. So if someone is producing good fruit in their life, not bananas or apples, but love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. If someone is producing, if I can see that in Jennifer, I can see self-control in her. She's got good fruit, okay? That's how I measure the health of her spirit. Oh, her spirit's pretty healthy. I see patience in her. I see goodness and kindness in her, all right? If you see somebody flying off the handle all the time and not holding their tongue when they should, and that's not good fruit, the health of their spirit might not be uh, might not come back with a good report. Does that make sense? This is how you measure it. All right. All right, so Romans 8, real quick. Uh, if, you, if you want to turn to it, you can turn to Romans 8. Um, if not, we, we're going to show it up here. But this is why we must go deeper. Because, man, I just really don't want to lead ignorant and spiritually shallow Christians. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't have any desire to lead ignorant and spiritually shallow Christians. And w one really great thing about it is I don't think that I do. Everywhere Revive Church goes, man... Uh, we shine. Today we're going to have uh, the Dream Team celebration. It's a party. It's real quick. It only lasts till 1230. So we feed you some snacks and popcorn and stuff. Invite everybody to stay. This is where we just tell some testimonies. What's God been doing in your life? You don't just hear from me, but you hear from others that God is moving in. Have some popcorn. We give out some prizes. It's a really fun time to connect with God, but we get to share some victories. And there's a victory that happened just the other night with our church and our youth and our prayer warriors that I wanted to share with you guys. But I'm, I'm going to save it for, for our Dream Team celebration. But I don't want just people to know some, you memorize some, some good colloquialisms, you know, some Christian phrases, some Christianese, right? No, I want, I want everybody to know, why do you believe what you believe? Why? Can you defend your faith? Why is it important for you to have a daily personal encounter with Jesus Christ? Why is that important, right? So I want us to, to know how, how to find scriptures when you're like, oh, what's that scripture? It'd be really good right now. Know that scripture, right? So that's, that's a mature, deep relationship with, with Christ. So we're about to have an encounter with the Word of God. So let that sink in for just a second. I'm fixing to read from Romans 8. We're going to have an encounter with a book. How do you have an encounter with words on a page? Because in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is God. This is, this is, <laughs> this is living and breathing. You can have an encounter with your Word if you know how to read it. All right, Romans 8. 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit that dwells in you. Some of your Bibles might say quicken your mortal bodies. It means give life to your mortal, mortal bodies. Spirit, the spirit is, is what makes you who you are. Your spirit is what makes you who you are. It's not, it's not your hair. It's not how fast you can run. You know, it's not that you pinched a nerve in your back. It's not that. Praise God. Who you are is your, is your spirit. And can I tell you something? Your spirit never dies. When your loved one dies, everything about that person that you love doesn't die. What you love about that person, their smile, their laugh, their, their integrity, the way they love you, uh, who they are as a person, that doesn't die. You know, that coffin, that lay in the ground, that's not them, okay? Our spirits are just phenomenal. They're just incredible. Who you are is incredible. It's so incredible, Jesus Christ saw to it that it would never die. That's, that means you're awesome. It's got to mean you're awesome. It's got to mean you're awesome. 
So verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. That means we owe somebody something. But then it says we are debtors, but not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. Hey, can I tell you, all, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature wants you to do. You don't owe your flesh nothing. Dorinda, you just going to have to bear with me. That's how I talk. All right. <laughs> you don't owe your flesh anything. And even if you did, you could never repay it because the flesh is never satisfied. Anything you give the flesh, it just wants more of it, doesn't it? And you know that you, you, you get the, this picture of this really, really clearly when you fast. When you fast, you realize, I don't need food nearly as much as I thought I did. And you realize, I really just need the Spirit of God. When you fast, do you have more energy or less energy? I have more energy. If you're fasting for a spiritual, and if you're fasting to go on a diet, you're probably mopey and you know, pale skin looking and you know, you're probably not doing too good. But if you're, if you're fasting spiritually, I've got more energy than I've ever, I know what to do with. I'm stronger than I ever, because I'm realizing, oh, I, I just need God. I don't need to grocery shop and spend money on this and prepare that meal, eat the meal, clean up the meal. I can just spend that time with God. I'm so much stronger when I'm, when I'm realizing I don't need fleshly stuff nearly as much as I thought. If you think feeding your flesh is a way to get that nagging temptation to go away, this proves, proves it wrong right here. You don't owe your flesh nothing. If, if you give your flesh, if you give in to some sexual immorality, you think it's going to want more? Is your flesh going to want more of that? Everybody knows that it does. Don't be sitting there all righteous. I don't, I don't know, Pastor. I'm in church. I don't, I'm a church goer. I don't have sexual immorality. Right? All right? If you give in to that, it just wants more. All right? It just wants more. All right? So here we go. 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. You will what? Die. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. If you're led by the Spirit, you're the sons of God. And if you're a woman, you're a daughter. All right? So just insert that, okay? You're children of the Most High. If you're led by the Spirit, you're children of the Most High God. It's good stuff, man. Right? Uh... But you got to be led by, you can't be led by something that's this important once a week, can you? No, you can't. This is an everyday thing. You must take your journey with God to the next level. I'm just, I'm begging you. This is my plead with you. We got to go deeper, man. We got to go deeper, Revive Church. Not as a church, that's like what we do on Sundays, but as a church people, what we do when we're not in this building. You've got to go deeper. This is every day. You got to take your journey with God to the next level. And I can't take it for you. 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit, those are the sons of God. It's one thing to have the Spirit of God, which all Christians have. But it's another thing to be led by the Spirit, isn't it? It's a whole other thing. Being led by the Spirit means you've got to surrender to the Spirit. If, if Jody's going to lead me in something, I've got to surrender to his lead, correct? Right? And only then does he take the lead. All right? The lead must be given. Okay? So you've got to surrender to the Spirit of God to let the Lord lead you. And you can't just invite God to be a part of your life and what you're doing and call it good. Most of us pray like that. I just invite God to be a part of what I'm doing. I'm having a meal. God, would you bless the meal? You didn't ask God if you should have the meal. You just prepared the meal. All right, you want to buy a house. God, will you bless the house? Did you ask God if he wanted you to have the house? All right, God, bless my first day on the job. Did you talk to God about getting that job? This is going deeper with the Lord. We always ask God to bless our lives instead of conforming and transforming our lives to already be in and move in the blessings of God. All right? Amen. This is going deeper. This is getting, I hope this is all right. Is this all right? We're going, to get, we're going deep. We're getting mature. All right? All right, cool. So we got just a little bit more. That's all right. We're still going to, we're still going to get out on time and beat the Baptist to lunch. It's all good. All right. So don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. All right. Just pray about it, girl. <laughs> All right. So, in order to do this, this is very unpopular. I'm going to say something so unpopular, right? Say it, right? It's so unpopular. But you guys, in order to not just invite God into your life, keep living your life the way you're going to live your life, just invite God to bless what you're doing, in order to actually transform your life to God's way, His way, you have to die to yourself. It ain't preached on a lot. Dying to yourself. We want to do what we want to do. 
You want that boat? Praise God, where two or more are gathered together in my name, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Except that's not what the Bible says at all. It says you must die to your own life and pick up a life of Christ. Anyone who would try to save his life will lose it. But anyone who dies to themselves will gain it. And more abundantly. I don't want my vision. I want God's vision. I don't want my version of what I think our marriage should look like. I want God's version of what our marriage should look like. I don't, want, I don't want my vision to be carried out with Amanda. I want God's vision to be carried out in her. I don't want my wife. I don't want, I want my wife to be like this. I want my wife to be like that. I don't want my wife. I want the daughter of God. And I want the daughter of God that God prepared for me. Specifically. All right? This is letting go of our way. This is dying to self. I don't want my career to go how I think it should go. I want my career to go how God wants it to go. Do you want your job to go how you want? Or do you want your job to go how God wants and whatever he wants is okay with you? That's a whole other deep thing. You get this by having a daily personal encounter with the Spirit of God. You can't check in with him on Sunday with stuff that's important. You gotta check in with him every single day. So you don't check in with him, you have an encounter, all right? For you did not receive, verse 15, you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. When you said yes to Jesus, you received the spirit of adoption into the king of all kings, kingdoms, all right? You became royalty in whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You have been adopted into something huge, way bigger than a building. And something about adoption, man, birth kids, you kind of get what you get, right? You do. Praise God, God gave us jet and rain. But if you feel like you've been abandoned by an earthly father, if you feel like you don't have a family, this is really good news to you. Because when you're adopted, you're chosen. In a large degree... That's even better than being born into the kingdom of God. God chose you. I said, I'll take that one. You are adopted into my family. And there's other scriptures that confirm this about when you're adopted into God's family, your family, he becomes Abba Father. So whatever your earthly father looked like, you got a new one that's perfection. If your model of dad wasn't good growing up, your model of father is heavenly. And you got to get to know him by having a daily personal encounter with him. Abba, Father. The closest English word we have to Abba, Father, is Daddy. When I first heard somebody say, Daddy God, have y'all heard people say that before? I'm going to go, I'm going to talk to Daddy God. I thought, what a disrespectful way to look at God. What a disrespectful approach. Like, Daddy, he's Father, you know? Except when you read the scripture, that's what, that's what the scripture tells us to call him. Abba means daddy. So I, I started thinking about that this week. Daddy. Well, there's my daddy right there. And, and me and Dorinda still call him daddy. Dorinda calls him daddy every time she addresses him. All right? I sometimes call him daddy, but I don't know. It sounds a little girly sometimes. Hey, daddy. This is daddy. All right? But, <laughs> but I will still call him daddy sometimes. He still kisses me. Hey, I ain't ashamed of it. All right? Praise God. All right? Um, but... Why, why am I like my, my daddy? All right, like my dad's a good man. All right, I'm a good man because my dad's a good man. All right, don't over, you know, don't, anyway, whatever. All right, I know if somebody's just chomping at the bit. None of us are good, not one, not one is good. Stop, I, stop, you know what I'm saying, all right? Don't pick it apart, catch the message, okay? Um, but I'm a gentleman because my dad is a gentleman. I opened the door for my wife because my dad showed me to open the door for his wife. All right, I treat my wife awesome because my dad treated my mom awesome. All right, still does, right? Um, <laughs> or else, all right? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I like sports because my daddy likes sports. I like fast cars because my daddy likes fast cars. I like business-minded stuff because my daddy likes business-minded stuff. Why did I catch all that stuff from my daddy? Because I met with him once a week so he could instruct me. I had daily personal encounters with my father. 
interactions to the point to the degree that him rubbed off on me his stuff rubbed off on me like that's a daily personal encounter that you got to have with daddy god abba father and you become like daddy god abba father but only when you have you can't check in with him once a week and call it good daily personal encounters that's good right it's good stuff man i, I fear that a lot of us aren't aren't doing that to the degree that we we should be doing it man we just come for sunday man sunday's the play day Sunday's when we worship, when we hoop and holler, when we jump around, when Jermaine comes and lights up, just preaches the paint off the wall. And like Sunday is, is great, but man, time spent with Jesus, it's, it, we got to spend time with the sun to connect with the sun. I, I, I wrote it like this this week. Sunday is fun day. Monday is Sunday. All right? Sun spelled S-O-N. Is that on the screen behind me? All right. What I want you to see here is that the Spirit of God, when it actually penetrates, affects, connects, and becomes at one with your spirit, not my will but thine be done, Jesus prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will but thine be done. When the Spirit of God gets the wheel turning of your next decision, the offspring of that union is the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so I'm going to say that one more time. When the Spirit of God gets the wheel turning, of your next decision. You're not deciding what to do next, Ray, Jennifer, Watson. You're not like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But when the Spirit of God gets the wheel turning of your next decision, the offspring of that union, Spirit of man meets with the Spirit of God, gets that wheel turning of your next step, of your next decision. The offspring of that union is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of the change in your spirit to be more like God's Spirit. Okay, so a lot of times people say the fruit of the Spirit, of the Spirit. What is the Spirit that it's talking about, the fruit of the Spirit? What's the Holy Spirit? It can't be the Holy Spirit. It's got to be your Spirit. Why can't it be the Holy Spirit? Because one of the, the fruit of the Spirit, one of the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. You think God needs to remind himself to calm down self? Well, God doesn't have a self. How can a fruit of the Spirit of God be self-control? He is not a self. He, he doesn't need to show restraint. Um, he's God. He's, he's perfect. No, the fruit of the Spirit, all the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, all of those, those are the characteristics of your Spirit after your Spirit has joined God's Spirit. That makes sense? The fruit is a result of the relationship of that, those two things. All right? And the fruit of the Spirit manages the acts of of the flesh. Some of us try to defeat the acts of the flesh just by focusing on the problem and the issue at hand through power, strength, and might. We've all done that. We have a lustful desire, so we focus on the lustful desire. Don't do it. You know that old psychological thing, if everybody closes their eyes right now and I tell you don't think of a pink elephant, that's immediately going to pop into your head as a pink elephant. You can't focus on what's wrong. You can't focus on the act of the flesh to defeat the the act of the flesh. You got to focus on the union of the fruit of the spirit and it will destroy the act of the flesh. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever's honest in your life, whatever's just in your life, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's of good report, if there be any virtue, if there's any praise to be had in your life at all, please think on those things. This is telling, don't think on the acts of the flesh Think on the fruit of the Spirit. And then, and then in Philippians, it even adds to it. Honesty, justness, purity, lovely, things that are of good report, true. Think on those things. The more you focus on what's right with you, the more what's wrong with you will simply fall off. And how you do that is to make sure that you have a daily personal encounter with the Spirit of God. Amanda and I talk every morning. We get together every single day on the biggest ongoings of our life. There's not a day that goes by that we don't, we don't talk every, every single morning. And each day is different. We talk about each thing, different stuff every day. Why? We've known each other forever. Why, why do I have to talk every day? Because we've got to make sure that we're in alignment with everything that's going on. Because what's going on today is different than what's going on yesterday, is it not? <laughs> Your temptations tomorrow are not going to be the same as you had today. And the devil will come up with a new one on Tuesday. All right? So we get into alignment with everything. We encourage one another. We strengthen one another. And in doing so, we confirm our love for one another as well. 
building strength and fortifying our union. Not because we have to, not, we got to do our devotional, 15 minutes, check it off the list. No, doing a devotional is a good way to help you spend time with someone and go through the word if you're not really sure how. But we just talk. And I check in with her, she checks in with me, she makes me a better man. And I make her a better woman. And together we're better parents. And we do this every day to get into alignment so that our house doesn't fall apart. You see that spiritual message? Every day, daily, personal encounters with God to make sure your house doesn't fall apart. <laughs> Come on, man. That's good stuff. All right? So that our offspring is producing good fruit. We align ourselves daily for that purpose. To produce good spiritual fruit in your life, mama and daddy need to have a talk. What's the mama and daddy of the fruit that is supposed to be produced in your life. The mom and daddy is your spirit communing with the spirit of God. The mom and daddy. It's time for mom and daddy to have a talk every day. All right. <laughs> Romans 8. Last thing, last thing I want to say. Romans 8, 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. So when you get together and you have a union of your spirit with the spirit of God, this is what's happening. He's affirming to you. You're a child of the Most High God. You are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. You really let it sink in. Your brother is Jesus Christ. That really sinks in when you have a daily personal encounter with the Spirit of God. And if we suffer with Christ, which the Bible says we do, we also will be glorified with Christ. We share in all of his glory as well. And he wins, doesn't he? He wins. He wins every time. He wins every battle. He wins every argument. He wins every discord. He wins. He beats division. He beats immorality. He beats impurity every single time he wins. This is how it might look, all right, um, to pray through the fruit of the Spirit in the morning. This is to set yourself. But don't just pray through the fruit, I'm going to teach you like I did last week how to pray through the, the Lord's Prayer. This is how you pray through the fruit of the Spirit. But you can't just knock them down like, okay, I went through the joy, I went through the peace, I went through the love, I went through all this stuff. You, you have to understand where it comes from, and now you do. So this is how that might look. You have them in front of you if you don't have them memorized or you, or you have them memorized. And so you, you just, you're like, okay, love, joy, peace, patience, let's check in. All right, Father God, again, go through the Lord's Prayer like I taught you last week. Your name is above all. Your name is holy. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. God, not my way. Your way be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, give, us, give me the little stuff that I need. Um, okay, fine. Let's get back to the spirit. Okay? Lead me not into temptation. Father God, I, I, I'm tempted. Just have a conversation with him. Because you don't talk in these and thousands. Just have a conversation with him using the Lord's Prayer as a guideline. Once you're done with the Lord's Prayer... Take the temperature of the health of your spirit. All right, love, man. Which, by the way, you can have all the gifts of the spirit. You can preach demons out. You can have the gift of healing and the gift of prophecy. And the Apostle Paul says, if you, you have all that, but you don't have love, you ain't got nothing. That's how it was originally written in the Greek, Dorinda. You ain't got nothing. If you don't have love, that's pointing us back. No matter what you do in your life, if you don't have love, you're nothing. It's pointing us back to the fruit of the Spirit. That's what it's pointing us back to. You can do all this stuff. So this is how important this is. There's so many scriptures pointing to this. All right, Lord God, love. Am I, am I treating my job with love? Am I treating my neighbors with love? Love. Am I, how's my joy this morning? Man, my joy took a hit yesterday. Wasn't too happy yesterday. God, help me with my joy today. Do I have peace? I'm at peace today, Lord. God, thank you for that peace. Or, I don't have peace, God. I'm not at peace. Strengthen my peace today, Lord. Because don't just pray for things like, God, make, make my boss go away so I have peace. No. No, you're praying for you, your spirit with God's spirit, not somebody else in this moment. Don't pray. If this happens, then I'll have peace. It's like, praise God. Lord God, I'm not doing good with my peace. Lord God, how can I have more, more peace about this situation? I know I'm going to trust you, God. I don't live under my circumstances. So whatever the circumstances are, God, I, it doesn't really matter. You will never leave me and never forsake me. 
I trust you. I put my trust in you. Ah, now I have peace, love, joy, peace, patience. That's also called long-suffering because patience is long. A fruit of the Spirit is how long can you endure it? We want it quick. A fruit of the Spirit is have you endured it for a long time? That's a fruit of the Spirit. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy, right? Patience. How's my patience? I don't want to know any more of it. I don't want to know. Uh, but how is it? Let me check in with you. That's how you pray through the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. That's how you do it. So you guys, I hope this, the, the, these, these uh, messages are, are helping you and beneficial to you. I, I show you why we need to do this. Why we need to go deeper with the Lord. What the benefit is from it. How, and then I show you how to do it. This is what that might look like, praying through it. But you guys, you got to meet with the king every single day. A daily personal encounter with the Lord. I hope this blessed y'all. I hope it was good for y'all. Y'all stand to your feet. Let me pray over you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, like, like always, we're gonna, if you need special prayer, we're going to have our altar team up here. They're going to pray for you, whatever needs you might have. And don't forget, our small groups are going on. If you want to connect with somebody, that small group wall out there, or you can also visit the small groups on our website. But right after this, our dream team party's happening right out there. So if y'all don't have anywhere to go, y'all stick around, have some popcorn, some snacks with us, and let's, let's uh, share some victories about the Lord. But right now, let's turn to God in our prayer time. Let me pray over you. Lord Jesus, man, God, you are awesome. You are holy. Your name is above all names. Father God, we just praise you so much for showing us the depth of the message behind the fruit of the Spirit. We don't just want to talk about the fruit, Lord God. We want to get in line with the Spirit. And Lord God, I pray today, church family, if this is for you, if you'll join me, just, just agree with me in prayer. God, my spirit needs to mature. If that's you today, church family, just let them know. <laughs> you can say it even quietly. You don't even have to verbalize it. Just let them know. That's me, God. My spirit needs to mature, Father. And God, I'm going to chase after you this week to have a daily personal encounter with the Spirit of God. Father God, help bring life back into my moral body by lining my spirit up with your spirit. I pray against any distraction this week that would keep me from spending quality time with you and encountering my Abba Father, my Daddy God, and spending that time. I can come into your presence saying, Daddy, watch me. Check this out, Daddy. Oh, Dad, I need some help. Could you, I don't know what to do, Dad. That's what a daddy is, Father God. Abba, Father, we can go to you about anything, whether it's playful or something serious. Thank you for being our Abba, Father. Lord Jesus, help us keep those appointments that we have set with you today. If I make an appointment with my daddy, I keep it. Father God, I pray today that our spirits were all strengthened, our mortal bodies are quickened. And we get closer and closer to you. Thank you for taking Revive Church deeper. Pray for all the churches in East Texas meeting right now, doing the same thing in one accord. We are one body of Christ. We pray against the spirit of dissension within the churches, Lord God, but we are one unit, one body in Christ. Lift up all the pastors and all the congregants of all the denominations, non-dominations, and everything else, Lord, today. Longview is your town, your city. Revive Church belongs to you. And we are your sons and daughters. And we are so proud to call you daddy. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. If you meant what you just prayed, say amen. Amen, amen. amen. Let's give him a hand. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Revive Church family and watch it online. I love you. Our altar team's going to be here. If you need prayer for anything at all, you need to give your heart to the Lord. Y'all come on up here. The rest of us, we going in there for Dream Team Party, baby. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it blessed you. If it did, consider sharing this. Share this with a friend. Send it on down the line so it can help and inspire somebody else and help us grow the kingdom of God. Also, you guys, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. When you subscribe to the YouTube channel, it grows it so more people see it. And also hit the notification thing so whenever we upload new stuff, you're the first to be alerted so we can continue to lift one another up. Iron sharpens iron and we continue to grow the kingdom of God. Thank you guys so much once again for watching this video. Y'all have a blessed day.